obviously eye point is going to vary from person to person based on their position. What matters is what it looks like to you. That is your perspective when sitting in the airplane. In the first example, the airplane has just lifted off and a VX climb has been established. Note what the view looks like. If I pull the nose up to a point where the horizon is just underneath the black part of the top of the dash, that pitch along with full power will give me a, a VX or a best angle of climb, what I would use to clear obstacles. Now again, this is what it looks like to me. You have to determine what it looks like for you. This next example demonstrates my perspective for a VY climb. Note how the top of the cowling is level with the horizon. So, by pulling the nose up to this point where the horizon is level with the cowling, that pitch along with full power will give me a VY or best rate of climb in the Cessna 172. This example demonstrates my perspective for a cruise climb. Note how the horizon runs through or intersects the middle of the compass. I can trim the nose to this position and by applying full power get very close to a 90 knot airspeed and establish a good rate of climb to my cruise altitude. All this without having to bring my eyes back into the cockpit except just to verify uh, I'm getting the climb performance that I expect. This is the perspective I want to memorize for cruise flight. The mag compass appears to me to be a few inches below the horizon. I could use any reference. There was a screw on the door post to my left that was close to where the horizon is. I could use that. In a real airplane I might make a fist, put that on top of the dash, observing how close the top of my fist is in relation to the horizon. Another way would be if I took the height of the mag compass as I'm looking at it in this picture and mentally added a second one on top of the first that would be very close too. Whatever I decide the important thing is to memorize the sight picture so that I can easily determine when there's a deviation from that. That way I do not have to have my eyes glued to the instruments when they should be outside. Here's a level turn to the left. Note in this example where the mag compass is in relation to the horizon. I can easily use that to determine if I'm making a level turn. The next two pictures demonstrate the descent. I have let the autopilot handle the rate of descent and I'm managing the power to determine the airspeed. I would use an estimation here of pitching the nose below the horizon a distance of three compass heights. The next three pictures show the landing transition from my perspective. Here's where I've decided to stick the point of intended landing in the windscreen. If that point moves up or toward the top of the windscreen, I'm going to land short. If the point starts to move closer to the cowling, I will overshoot the intended point of landing. The next frames show me breaking the glide or transitioning to the round out or flare. Once I'm right above the runway a foot or so, I pull the nose up into the landing attitude. You can see once in the landing attitude, the cowling blocks most of the view of the runway ahead. This is not a problem as I've shifted my focus from over the nose to the left front corner of the nose from the door post onward and a couple pictures of what it looks like from an external view. Right above the runway, holding the plane off with increasing back pressure on the yoke until the plane decides to quit flying. This is where you will hear the stall warning. Now a view of what it looks like inside and outside of the cockpit just after touchdown. Remember, determine what these views look like to you based on your eye point and memorize those sight pictures for the different attitudes based on the different phases of flight from departure to landing.